Above our tarantula goddess's Arachno Sanctorium lies an outworld containing one of the most extraordinary ant colonies I've ever kept. A recovering township of yellow crazy ants works fastidiously across the terrain of their outworld. A holding cell and quarantine of an empire previously scorned, these are the survivors of the Golden Empire, a once flourishing and powerful ant kingdom, numbering in the millions, but quickly reduced to these few hundreds after a lethal mite plague struck them. These mites attached to the bodies of the ants and sucked their blood until they each died off one by one. But luckily, we were able to save a few of them with the help of some predatory mites harvested from great beetles who eventually eradicated the bad vampiric mites from the ants. So today, the Golden Empire, one of the oldest and most cherished ant colonies on this channel, takes its first joyful step upward, resilient as ever, despite losing their once great numbers and even their previous kingdom of old. As we watch these amazing ants move into their brand new royal home that I'm positive you all will love building with me and watching the ants move into. But most important of all, wait until you see what shocking thing I discovered at the end of this video once the Golden Empire was all moved in. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. These ants have no idea what's up ahead for them. After having suffered such a tough past, the Golden Empire truly deserves this new home I have planned. What's interesting to note is that each of these worker ants, aside from the queen, was born within the past two or three months. You see, worker ants only live for two to three months tops, while the queen ant, who is hiding somewhere in this mess, and who we'll see later on in this video, can live for decades, as much as 30 years in some species. So isn't it crazy to think that these ants probably have no idea what hardship their older sisters and colony had undergone in their not too distant history. Now take a look at this AC family. See all that brood? Those are piles of cocoons, eggs and larvae, all above ground. The reason for this is because I've recently watered their territories and in response, they've transported their young above ground. A response these tropical ants naturally do in the event of rain to avoid drowning from tropical flooding. But usually the ants won't need to do this if they've nested in a place that is higher above ground or where flood water can't access. I felt bad seeing the ants have to constantly bring their brood above ground every time I watered their territories. And look where else the ants have decided to pile their brood during such times. Ants, eggs, larvae and pupae are all jam-packed in their water test tube, their reservoir for fresh drinking water. They just love how the space is both humid, but also dry from the periodic floods. They've even gone and done the same thing in their sugar water reservoir. And so AC family, I felt the time had come for the ants to have a more secure place to nest, where they wouldn't have to worry about these routine floods and they could be certain they could live in peace. And now that the ants were completely parasitic mite free, healthy and on their way to full recovery, quarantining them here in this outworld was no longer necessary. It was time to give the Golden Empire their first ant nesting space since their great and necessary exodus from their previous home. I think you guys might love what I had planned ahead. And furthermore, what awesome thing the Golden Empire ended up revealing to us once they all settled in. Behold, the future royal quarters of the Golden Empire. An AC Hybrid Nest 2.0 Tetramorium. But with some customizations, let's have a look. I've laced the tunnels and rooms with gravel and sphagnum moss to help the Golden Empire feel much more cozy once moved in. My intentions are for the ants to move these bits of debris around as they please so they can totally customize their living space as they feel fit. This debris will also be water absorbent and help keep humidity levels up. These ants like humid nests and don't do well in dry nests. So adding these moisture sponges will truly help the ants 
the young, and the queen feel truly comfortable. When moving ants into a formicarium, i.e. an ant farm, it's important you know what conditions their species usually prefer. In the case of the Golden Empire, who are yellow crazy ants, they like medium to high humidity in their nest, and don't do well in dry nests. Ants like most carpenter ants, and harvester ants, on the other hand, prefer medium to drier nests. I think the Golden Empire will really like this space. By the way, for those wondering, this here is the Tetramorium version of the AC hybrid nest, inspired by Tetramorium nests, that is, the nests of pavement ants, but can be used for any species of ant that fits. I think I'll add a bit more sphagnum moss bits, and I'll also add some piles of coconut fiber, which are highly water absorbent and don't rot easily. This will also help keep humidity levels up. And they'll also likely use this coconut fiber to bury and close off any rooms they decide to store their waste, rooms that get moldy, or choose as the colony bathroom area. And just like that, interior decorating, done! The next step was to glue on the glass pane that will enclose this entire nest space. So to do that, I just use Elmer School Glue, non-toxic to ants and easy to use. You don't need to glue the glass on for easy removal and cleaning later. But here in the tropics, we have to worry about tiny wild ants like feral ants and ghost ants, which are small enough to fit under the glass and totally invade this nest. Plus, we don't want another foreign parasitic mite episode. So I'm gluing this bad boy. And on goes the pane of glass. And voila! Done! I'll place the cover on to keep the space nice and dark and give the nest 24 hours for the glue to dry. In the lower hydration tub, I've decided to use sphagnum moss to keep the nest nice and humid. I find this stuff to be highly water absorbent, chemical free, easily replaceable, and a great way to keep hybrid nests hydrated. Now if you're new to hybrid nests, here's how the ant farm technology works. This lower area of the nest here is the humid end of the nest. The floor of this lower area is perforated with tiny micro holes, which suck the water from the tub below via capillary action and deliver moisture and humidity to this lower nest region. The upper areas of the nest with unperforated floors remain drier. It's important to have a moisture gradient in an ant farm so the ants can hydroregulate and choose which areas to keep what. They'll be adjusting the brood locations, garbage and bathroom areas, queen quarters, and food storage according to moisture needs. With this hybrid nest, I'll probably only need to water the nest about once a week. By pouring water into this tub area, the sphagnum moss inside will absorb the water and deliver it upwards into the nest. Several years ago, in the Golden Empire's very beginnings, they lived in an earlier version of the hybrid nest, so I can't wait to see them move in here for nostalgic feels. Are you guys excited too? Building ant homes like this is one of my favorite things to do, and so is moving ants in. It was finally time to give the Golden Empire their new, well-deserved home. It was the next evening, and the creatures of the ant room were winding down, or winding up for the night. Our new vampire crabs could sense something was up, and they were right. For above their crab island Vampiron sat the Golden Empire's outworld. The Golden Empire was restless in their enclosure, for they could feel something was slightly different tonight. More about that in a bit. But meanwhile, the Golden Empire's new home lay just below, waiting and ready to be populated. The glue had fully dried now, and nest previously hydrated. Now AC family, here was the plan. The AC outworld has been situated atop Vampiron's light fixture. This LED light fixture is currently set on blue light. It can be set on blue or full blast in full spectrum. My plan is to use heat to encourage the ants to move out of this setup and into the new nest. The blue light has begun the warming process. It's not hot, but just a bit warm to get the ants to start feeling antsy. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. 
but once this LED is turned on full blast, it will start to get quite warm and the ants will begin to look for a new cooler place to nest. Now see this water test tube here? I'll be disconnecting it and place a long tube which will run down to this hole here for entrance into the nest. And in case you were wondering what this second hole is for, that's just a heating cable for those living in places with cold weather, needing to heat their ants, or ants kept in an air-conditioned room. We won't be using this. As for this hole, I'll be removing the plug and placing the ants water test tube in its place. The plug will be placed here for now. Here was the tube that would be the bridge to their new lavish layer below. Alrighty, C family, all was set. Are you ready to move the Golden Empire in? I know I am. Let's do this. I plug the tube into the nest hole. And now to remove this test tube, I carefully slid it off and quickly secured the tube in its spot. Thankfully, only one ant managed to jump out during the swap, but I caught it and placed it back into the outworld. Instantly, the ants began to make their way down the tube and into the nest. <laughs> oh, look how excited they are finding this new strange space. I just love this part. And as planned, in goes the removed water test tube into this hole. All right, and now to turn on the LED light to full blast. And we're done. Now let's watch the ants as they move in to the new home. The message of the new territories spread quickly to members of the colony, causing inquiring ants to wander curiously down into the foreign lands to check out the hype. Ants were also returning to the outworld to spread the word that indeed there was a new place the colony might like to explore further. How I loved watching the ants explore the tunnels of the new nest. As for the ants stationed in the water test tube, they too had begun to explore the new home and had by now met up with ants coming in from the main colony. The ants delighted as they explored every little corner of the nest. It wasn't long before it was clear that the ants were now completely hyped about this rumored space that was a good candidate for habitation. A place that was cooler, moist, comfortable, and large. The ants carried these messages using pheromones, biochemicals produced by their body, seeing as ants can't communicate through voice. They also vibrated their bodies to excite nearby ants. You could almost hear the ants conversing Let's see what all the hype is about. OMG, the rumors are true. It is an awesome place. I bet the space is still unsafe for the queen and brood. It was important that the new potential space be verified and quality checked by many ants before they decide to make an official move, just in case the new space turns out to be unfit or unsafe for any reason. This approval process was absolutely necessary because imagine if they moved in and this space turned out to be an anteater's den, or an anteating frog's hangout, or even another ant colony's nest. I could tell the ants still hadn't felt the nest to be fit for habitation because the ants in the water test tube were still holding the brood in place. We will know the ants have given their stamp of approval once they start transporting the brood inside. But I was confident the time would come when they fall in love with the territories. And to help speed this process up, it was time to place the cover on top. Ants naturally love darkness in their nests, so this would help deem the space nestable. The crabs watched curiously from the shores of Vampiron as the Golden Empire traveled to and from the hybrid nest, delivering messages and key geographical mapping info. The ants continued to vibrate their bodies more and more and were probably releasing more approval pheromones to get all inquiring ants excited so they could let the rest of the colony know that they should start a move. Major colony decisions are democratic in nature and require campaigning. And look, it looks like the campaigning is working. One ant has decided to carry a mature larva, but it looks like she's keeping the larva here for now. It seems she isn't 100% convinced that the new chartered lands below are fit for the brood to be stored. I watched as she continued to wait for more convincing information and perhaps a greater number of ants to give their stamps of approval. What you're witnessing here, AC family, 
is ant democracy at work. The crabs lost interest in this ant highway pretty fast. As the outworld continued to heat up, ants began to look for new cooler places to transport their brood. Ants in the sugar test tube were also showing signs of agitation due to the heat. I knew it wouldn't be long now until the ants began their move. Or at least, that's what I thought. Check out what I saw a few hours later. Returning to the nest, I was expecting to see a full-out emigration operation underway. But instead, I saw this. A heated nest and tons of ants and brood filling the tube. Looks like the ants had decided to live in the tube for now. I bet the ants were still in the process of approving the nest space. This generation of Golden Empire worker ants were definitely picky. They clutched their brood and stationed themselves in place as the approval process continued. They seemed happy in the tube for now, so I was in no rush to force them to emigrate into the nest we made for them. In cases like this, you want the ants to decide on their own that a nest given to them is fit to live in. The ants know best when it's time for them to set up shop. Perhaps the nest was too moist at the moment. Perhaps they were still foreign to plastic walls. But then, what I spotted next made me hopeful. Looking into the water test tube, I could tell a lot of the brood had been moved in. This meant, AC family, that the ants had begun to call at least parts of the hybrid nest home. After living safely in this outworld for so long, I don't blame them for being attached to the lands. If this was the case, I didn't want to disturb the ants at all. So instead of peeking into the hybrid nest, I decided to give the ants their privacy and go to bed. And AC family, waking up the next morning, I checked up on the ants and you won't believe what I saw. An almost empty outworld and an almost empty tube. Moving downwards towards the nest, I came to a grouping of ants and brood. Whoa, a very large grouping of ants and brood. But are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Look! There, by the nest entrance, stood the royal queen. And even more awesome, nearby was OMG, another queen. The quarantine colony had two queens. The reason this double queen revelation was amazing news is because if you recall, this salvation operation from the mites involved quarantining one healthy queen and reintroducing her into the collected quarantined colony. We never really knew if there were other queens in this collected colony, but we at least knew there was one healthy egg-laying queen and that was all we needed to keep the colony going. But I guess we were lucky and the Golden Empire had two queens. But hold on. It turns out there was more AC family. I opened the hybrid nest to peek inside and check out what I saw. Tons of ants and brood everywhere. The ants scurried about and hung out at different sections of the nest. Some carrying brood to and from various locations. It was so satisfying to see how the Golden Empire had transformed this space into their new home. AC family, it was clear the Golden Empire loved it. They really, really loved it. And check out what else I spotted. Some ants had eclosed, emerging from their cocoons overnight as adult ants. See that light-colored ant there? This new nest was their first experience of life as adult ants. Can you imagine what this ant might be thinking right now? Hey, so this is why you guys were rattling me around all night. And as I looked around further, the biggest shock of all. There, see her? That large gaster, it's a third queen, huddled under all that chaos. The Golden Empire had officially attained three healthy egg-laying queens. But AC family, that's not all. A fourth queen spotted at this corner with workers carrying her newly laid eggs. All right. But AC family, that's again not all. Could it be? Yes. A fifth queen there surrounded by workers tending to her and plucking every egg she laid. 
I wondered if there were more queens huddled somewhere in this darkness. But either way, judging from all the eggs the workers were collecting, it was clear the Golden Empire was well on the road to recovery. And I knew in my heart that they'd once again see the massive numbers they once knew. The initial Golden Empire had seven queens, but now we knew for sure they had at least five of those queens alive and laying. These queens were the originals, who have seen the rise and fall and rise again of their super colony. And look what else I spotted. Here at this corner, a male elate. The Golden Empire was producing reproductives. This was something I've never yet seen the Golden Empire do. So for sure, this was a good sign of continued health, growth, and prosperity to come. This entire sight and moment was truly magical and moving for me because it showed me firsthand how persistent nature can be at surviving. Regardless of what hardships befell the Golden Empire, regardless of what life threw at them, and in their past there have been many, these ants have continued to thrive and fight on. It was this very display of vitality and vigor in the face of hardship, hostility, and seeming hopelessness that reminded me how all life on Earth was made possible. I felt truly honored to be able to witness the journey these ants have been on with our own eyes, and to experience this moment of the Golden Empire moving into this new home with you guys. They were an inspiration to keep fighting, that anything was possible, and that anyone or anything could once again rise triumphantly like a golden phoenix, even a colony of little ants. By night, I had fixed and completed the Golden Empire setup. I fixed their outworld to look much more naturalistic, to be their new outdoor living area where I'd be placing the food. The water test tube would continue to provide the colony with fresh water, and the sugar test tube with the liquid carbs needed to power the colony. And as is AC tradition, I gave them a housewarming gift of roach meat to welcome them home. We will continue to expand this setup as the colony grows, and I look forward to giving them an absolutely massive kingdom in the future. For now, the Golden Empire was going to live comfortably in their beautiful yet simple ant farm setup between the Arachno Sanctorium and Vampiron. Long live the Golden Empire! All right, AC family, what do you think? Are you guys as happy as I am that the Golden Empire is well on their way to recovery? Amazing to find out that there are at least five queens though, right? What a surprise. There was still so much more ahead in the Antiverse though, with the other ant kingdoms. So guys, if you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and bell icon now, so you don't miss out in the real life drama of the inhabitants of the ant room. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now, it would really help a lot. Speaking of ants, it's officially nuptial flight season in the Northern Hemisphere, and a lot of you are catching Queen Ants now. And in case you didn't know, we've got all the top of the line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels, from beginner to advanced, as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antscanada.com and browse our shop. We ship worldwide and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. So go check us out and pick up your ant farm kit and ant gear today. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC in our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you'd like to watch extended play footage of the Golden Empire moving into their new home, all to the sounds of relaxing music. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, name one of the materials used to build the island of Vampyron. There were several correct answers, but congratulations to Kitty Cat 11, who correctly answered filter foam. Congratulations, Kitty Cat 11, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what did we use to move the Golden Empire into the new hybrid nest? 
Leave your answer in the comment section, and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.